Hey guys, this is Animat, and today I'm going to be reviewing... Wait, what, what am I doing? Oh, cool, Finding Dory! Hey guys, this is Animat, and welcome back to Animat's Blu-ray Reviews. And today we got you one of the biggest animated features of 2016, Pixar's Finding Dory, the sequel to the ever-popular Finding Nemo. And before I go right into the Blu-ray itself and all the treasures that it unfolds in here, uh, first, let me tell you a little bit about the movie itself. And I think the best way to describe Finding Dory is that this is the sequel that nobody knew that they ever wanted. It's actually really surprising how Pixar actually managed to find a way to make a sequel to something like Finding Nemo that's supposed to be like an entire movie on its own and somehow it works. The sequel actually manages to successfully capture uh, what really made the first movie work. So there is a lot of heart into it. Uh, there's also a good amount of humor, so it's a lot of fun to watch, it's really charming, and plus the fact that the animation is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, once again, Pixar pretty much uh, made Lightning Strike twice and able to really capture the beauty of underwater life. On top of adding in brand new characters that really do bring in new depth, and on top of like developing some of the more... Uh, well-known characters as well, like Marlin and Dory. Uh, my only criticism that I would have with it is that even though it does stay true to the first movie, it does follow a little bit too much of the first movie. Like, there are a few times when you feel like you're going through the same steps. Like, this might have a few cases of deja vu. But with the execution that they've done in the animation and also a great story with a lot of heart and a lot of great humor, uh, overall, this is definitely a fantastic sequel. So with that said, uh, not only is this a great movie, but in terms of what they got in this, holy crap, that is also amazing. Like, I can't just, like, remember in my head, like, just a small amount of bonus features that they have. They got an entire giant freaking list. Like, I even have to put up uh, right beside me Blu-ray.com just to help me with a little bit of info to remind me what the fridge is in this thing. There's like so many of them. Maybe I have short-term memory loss as well. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, so the first bonus feature that they do include is actually the animated short that appeared before Finding Dory, which is Piper. And let me tell you, this is uh, an animated short that I'm really glad that I own in this, considering that it is just absolutely adorable. In fact, um, even though, like, you could just watch the movie itself, I do highly recommend you do, like, the theatrical experience and just watch Piper before Finding Dory. It really is worth it. It's such a cute and adorable animated short. Very well made, a amazing animation, just absolutely worth it. Uh, and then there is another one called Marine Life Interview. And that one is more like an exclusive animated short that they have done for Finding Dory, where they mostly interviewed many of the new characters, uh, talking about like how it, how is it when they went into their little adventure with Dory. And uh, they do have a little bit of a punchline at the end, and it really does make it worth it. So it's really cute and really hilarious at the same time. Uh, another one that they have, oh, this is actually a great one. This is called The Octopus That Nearly Broke Pixar. Now, the one thing I want to say is that the, like, one of the massive highlights of this movie is actually Hank. Both by the performance by Ed O'Harris and also by the animation itself. And this actually goes, like, this is nine minutes of talking about how they developed the idea of Hank and how they animated him and a lot of the struggles that went into it. It really is... Um, like in a technical sense the most complicated character that Pixar has ever made but it really really is worth it um, and then there is another great one called uh, what were we talking about which is pretty much a document well not a documentary but just a five minute behind the scenes look into how the people at Pixar pretty much took a character like Dory which was made more to be this uh, comic relief in the first movie and turned that into a more like an actual main character like to really give her a lot of depth where her short-term memory loss plays a key factor in the movie and it's not just used for gags 
Another one that they got, this is another like, you know, like another really cute one is called Casual Carpool, where Andrew Stanton is just driving uh, a lot of the main cast, like, uh, like um, Al Brooks and uh, Edo Harris and uh, several more people, where they would just go and in the car, just having a nice little chat and like Andrew Stanton just asking them like, oh, did you do your homework? Did you talk about this? I was like, did, did you do research on the clownfish and the octopus and all that kind of stuff? So uh, that one was a lot of fun to watch. And then we got another one, uh, which I really do admire is called animation and acting. This is where we see the performance overall and not just uh, Finding Dory, but also in terms of animated features as well, where in, t in terms of acting in an animated film, it's not just the voice actor. It's not just like Ellen DeGeneres and Al Brooks uh, doing their performance for the character. It also requires the animator. And this pretty much takes a, a quick look into how the animator and the voice actor pretty much has to like, pretty much like together combined, they gotta go and create this character. So that's a really uh, fascinating look. and. Uh, as an animation enthusiast, uh, that one I truly do admire. And then we do have another one called Deep in the Kelp. Now, this is like a quickie little thing where we look into how um, Pixar does a really good job onto research and the amount of like what they really have to go through in order to do all the different types of research when in terms of like looking into the marine biology, like into the the whole aquarium setting that Finding Dory is in, all the different animals that they have. My only issue with that bonus feature right there is mostly that the host is this kid from uh, a Disney Channel show or something. I don't know. She was kind of annoying, but that's pretty much it. Uh, and then there is another one called Creature Features, and this is where many of the cast in uh, Finding Dory would come in and they would just give out one little fact about the fish that they would play. And then also we have, of course, what is pretty much standard with these Blu-rays and stuff like that. You got the audio commentary. Uh, this time coming from directors Andrew Stanton and Angus McLean, along with uh, producer Lindsay Collins. So they pretty much go in depth about like how, like mo a lot of behind the scenes onto Finding Dory and uh, many interesting facts like what pretty much went on behind the scenes and all that stuff so very fascinating very in-depth very well made uh, and then you also got a few more behind the scenes extras uh, there's one that's called skating and Stre uh, sketching with Jason Deemer who is the character art director pretty much looking into his thinking process on what he would do when it comes to drawing many of these characters like um, like pretty much his visual references, what he would do when he would draw, uh, like many of these guys, like Dory, he thinks about drawing this flying pat, uh, ping pong paddle with Nemo. It's pretty much this little drumstick. Destiny is like, a, is like a giant oven mitt and several different examples. Uh, there, and that on top of that, like we also look into who Jason Deemer is, someone who is, uh, not only passionate about animation, but also, uh, someone who is passionate about skateboarding and the fact that this guy has been there for almost 20 years So he really is a Pixar veteran on top of that We also got Dory's theme and this one we look into the music of finding Dory like how is it that they were able to take uh, Some of the familiarity on the score of finding Nemo and try to interpret that into finding Dory and make it more about her uh, also on top of that we got Rough Day on the Reef. Now this one is just a minute long, but oh my god, the weird things that happen. This is mostly a lot of the animation goofs that came out a little bit weird. And um, if you guys want to have some material of like some weird memes or something like that, you could go and try to fish it out right there. No pun intended. Um, and then there's also another one. This is probably the weakest bonus feature in here. It's called Finding Nemo as Told by Emojis. Now, this one normally, I understand that Disney does this all the time. Like, they would do it with Frozen, they would do it with Tangled, and they would do it with uh, all sorts of different movies. But with this one, I don't really see why they would have to put it in this. Like, they, they, they could easily just put it on their YouTube channel and that's it. I don't really see much of the point why this has to be into the bonus features of this. And finally, we also got something called Fish Sticks, which is pretty much 
looking into all the different animations that they have done mostly for promotional purposes with all the different characters like Dory and Nemo and Marlin and Destiny and Bailey and Hank and uh, all that kind of stuff. And then you have another one which is the Living Aquariums. Now this one is not necessarily a bonus feature per se, but this is actually more just uh, a digital aquarium. So like if you ever need something to be on television that it's not necessarily something to watch, just something to be in the background. You can pretty much pop that in and, yeah, just let the atmosphere go from there. And finally, this is actually the biggest uh, bonus feature in here is actually the deleted scenes. And in total, it actually goes into 50 minutes worth. And in there, you actually see a lot of different behind the scenes, including, I think, like three to four different attempts of a prologue. And you see like the different steps that they want to take, like uh, how they pretty much want to start off with the like with the beginning of Finding Nemo, or how they want to start off with a different take on like Dory's origins and stuff like that. And on top, like you see different ideas that they want to try to implement, but it didn't really go in. And what's actually very fascinating is that there was actually one deleted scene where they pretty much cut off very late in the game. And at that point, um, like, the only place where you can actually see the deleted scene publicly instead of this is actually in the teaser trailer of Finding Dory, which is actually very fascinating. Now, that's pretty much all that there is in terms of the bonus features other than, like, the trailers and stuff like that. And when it comes to the Blu-ray itself, like, the packaging that it actually has... Now, if you may remember last time when there is a Pixar Blu-ray that it came out, which was The Good Dinosaur. Admittedly, like, it was fine with what it did. It's more of your standard Blu-ray package. But I was a bit more disappointed because uh, in that one, like, they didn't put in as much effort as they would with many of their other movies like whenever like a Pixar movie did really really well then they would give it like the royal treatment to do everything that they can to put everything on the blu-ray and with the good dinosaur they unfortunately left it off with just one blu-ray one dvd uh, digital hd and that's pretty much it but with finding dory i am more than happy to say that since that like this is highly critically acclaimed on top of being um like, very well received at the box office as well. Like, th this is Pixar's second animated feature that received more than a billion dollars at the box office. Um, we actually do get not one, but two, uh, two Blu-rays. So this is one with all the bonus features. Uh, well, no, like one with the movie and some of the bonus features, while another one is like devoted to plenty of the other bonus features. On top of that, you also get the DVD. And right over here, you actually get the digital HD. And by the way, like, this Dory right here is actually the card itself. Like, this is the digital card where, like, you look behind and you scratch it in and you see there is a code. So, uh, there's pretty much that. And honestly, it's really awesome. So, I'm glad that Pixar is giving it the famous, like, basically Pixar treatment on the Blu-ray. So, with all that said, with everything that it has, all the different bonus features, like, like I said, like, over two hours, uh, like, over two hours of bonus features. So, that pretty much explains why there are two Blu-rays in this. Um, great packaging and all that kind of stuff. So, everything is so good with it. Honestly, I, like, I'm gonna give it, like, one notch higher than I did with the movie itself, and yeah, I gotta go with a perfect 10 out of 10. Uh, I am really glad to see that Pixar, once again, is delivering such an amazing Blu-ray to one of their features. You get tons of bonus material. Everything that you want to learn about Finding Dory is basically in here. On top of different material that you have is just uh, equally as entertaining as the movie itself, and honestly, I am really glad that uh, Pixar would go and release such a bona fide and like very well crafted Blu-ray like something that they are very well known for with their previous works and implement that into this as well like I'm glad that they are back into doing like some of the best Blu-rays that you can ever find for an animated feature. Now here is actually an interesting fact for you guys the first Finding Nemo 
is actually said to be one of, if not the greatest selling DVD of all time. When it was released, like, it sold like hotcakes. Like, everybody had to go and get it, especially the fact that it was released very close to Christmas time. And I wouldn't be surprised that with Finding Dory, it would pretty much be uh, following in the same uh, footsteps, honestly. Like, this is definitely one of those Blu-rays that you gotta go and own it. Not only is this a great movie, but uh, like everything that you need about Finding Dory is definitely in here. And um, I highly do recommend it that you go put this in your collection. It's just absolutely worth it. And I am more than glad that I actually do own this. But anyways, that is pretty much it for this Blu-ray. So anyways, I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching. And if you guys want to go and see more of my reviews of some Blu-rays, then all you have to do is go to Film Book. So you can either subscribe to the uh, YouTube channel in which I host all my Blu-ray reviews. Or you could go on filmbook.com to see plenty of my other works. Like, I don't just do this for Filmbook, but I also do the animation podcast where I always talk about animation. And I also do uh, Movie News Weekly where I do, um, like, weekly reports where I play a little bit of journalism right there. Uh, but on top of that, if you guys would actually want to see more of me in general, then you can actually go and head down to my YouTube channel on top of my different social medias, and also I am on Patreon, so if you want to help me out there, that would be amazing. But other than that, that is pretty much going to be it, so I just want to say once again, thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, see you later dudes!